I want to. I want to butcher it. <laughs> Courtney Patty. <laughs> That's the country way. That's the country. <laughs> Patty. Good. Is it stuck? Testing. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Yeah, with the, okay. With the, with the cameras are good. Cameras rolling. Cameras rolling. Audio is good. Y'all ready? Ready. Y'all good? I'm ready, bro. I Let's told you go. I was born ready. Turn my mic up. For you. Let's take this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the road to the riches. Life takes a toll like bridges. Good friends become foes and snitches. Better watch who knows in your business. business, business, business. All right, Hustle Fam, Hustle Fam, we are back with another amazing episode. And today, I got Miss Courtney Petty, not Patty, (laughs) Petty in the building. What's up, Courtney? Hey, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Bumblebee Dispatch. Yes. Oh, man, listen, uh, this is a conversation I've been looking forward to having Mm -hmm. with with you. I've been hearing about Bumblebee Dispatch, and I know you do a whole lot of other things as well. Mm Um, so we're going to get into your story today. Is that okay with you? I might be a little sure. bit nosy. I might it's, ask. Look, it's okay. Be nosy. Is there anything that I can't ask? You can ask whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> look, she, she said it, y'all. So I can ask whatever I want. All right. So, so we're going to get into the story. All right. So let, let's kind of start where we're at now. Bumblebee Dispatch. Tell me about your business, about your company. Let's talk okay. about it. So Bumblebee is basically a one-stop shop in the logistics industry. We started off as a dispatch company. Um, and then we started doing authorities. We started managing other trucking companies. Now we have a trailer rental. We have over 150 trucks, trailers that we rent out. Um, we do authority setup services. We set up the LLCs, the INCs. We basically can take anyone that's looking to get into the trucking business from start to finish. Mm. We also have an online training portal. So we have like the freight broker training, the freight dispatcher training. Um, anybody from the comfort of their home, they can access our training online. So we're pretty much a one-stop shop in the logistics industry. We're also on YouTube as well. Mm. So we have a following on YouTube um, and all over social media, basically. And here I thought you only did dispatch. And look at that. Oh, you okay. do so much. I'm just playing. I, I knew you did more than that. All right. So we're going to get into the story of how you got into this crazy world of transportation. Okay. Let's talk about it. Where are you from? Let's talk about your backstory a little, a little bit. Okay. So I'm born and raised in Atlanta. I'm okay. a Georgia peach. Hey. Um, hey. <laughs> I got started into trucking actually via my older brother. Okay. So my older brother is 12 years older than me, but he's always been in the um, trucking industry. So he went to the federal penitentiary and he told me, I'm going to teach you how to run a trucking business from prison. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Um, I actually didn't want to do trucking. At that time, I felt like trucking was mainly for guys. You know, I was very young, early 20s. And um, he would tell me, you need to run a trucking business. So anyway, when he came home, went to the halfway house and he was coming home, we started the freight brokerage. Okay. And it's not as easy as it seems. A lot of people think they can get into the brokerage industry. And I always tell them that brokering is similar to real estate. Because once you finish real estate school, now you have to go out and find a home to sell. Mm, okay? Yeah. So the same thing with brokering. When you finish your training, you have to go and get a shipper with freight. And then you have to move that freight before you actually make some money. Um, so we did that. It was extremely hard. And then my brother started his trucking company. When he started his trucking company, um, I basically started managing the company for him. And I, then I started to contract myself out. And I'm like, if I can manage his company, I can do this for other guys in the industry. And so I started to manage other guys. I started to dispatch them. And I remember um, one week in dispatching, I made over $2,000 that week. Mm. And I had never made that for working for anybody. This was from the comfort of my home, in my pajamas, with a laptop, cell phone, and a printer. I made over $2,000. Wow. By 12, 1 o'clock, I was done. I had, you know, I could do whatever I want to do. So I just kept growing. I just kept getting more clients, more dispatch clients. And then as I started to grow, I started to partner with people in the industry. So factoring companies. ELDs. We actually, you know, if someone needs an electronic log or ELD, we get them set up with that. We provide factoring solutions. Um, The BOC3. So I just kept basically expanding my business. And that's basically what I did. And that first year I had made over six figures and I just kept multiplying and going from there. 
First year, you made over six figures. All right, so mm-hmm. let, let's slow down a little bit. Okay. All right, because you just went through a whole lot. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to start from the beginning. Your brother was, he bought a, tr- he had a truck already, or he just was, he had a dream of just getting into trucking. So my brother always been in trucking. Okay. So ever since I was younger, okay. he was in the trucking industry. Gotcha. And then he got caught up. Went he to went prison. To the, yes. And but went, he was telling you about the industry from prison. He said he's going to teach you how to run a business while he's in prison. Correct. Now, he he had a business, like an actual business at this time? He had a trucking business before he got incarcerated. Okay. And so then, how big was that business? Um, I don't think it was that big. Maybe two trucks. Okay. You know, it wasn't so really. So small business. Small business. All right. And he tells you that y- you can run it for him. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he wanted me to run that one or just he wanted to teach me about the trucking game. Okay, got you. Mm-hmm. Got you. Okay. So he encourages you to get into trucking. Mm-hmm. And the first thing you do is you actually help him run his business, correct? When he comes home. When he comes home. Yes. All right. So you're running this small business with two trucks, two mm-hmm. or so trucks, right? All right, cool. So tell me a little bit about that. What type of business was it? What type of freight were you guys running? Because I'm trying to get the whole picture to understand how you were able to start from there to build out this elaborate operation you have now. Okay. So what was what was that business doing? So first, let me go back a little bit. We started with freight brokering. Freight brokering. So when okay. he got out, my mother put up the money and the funds to get the brokerage started. Okay. And I was the one doing everything. He put everything in my lap, basically. Like, I need you to do this. He's very militant. Okay. So he would call me at 5 o'clock in the morning, wake up, I need you to call shippers. Yeah, people call me a boss, but he's way bossier than me. <laughs> right. um, so we started with that, but it wasn't easy. And so then he was able to um, get resources to get his trucking company started. Okay. And so as he started that first truck and comp- that first tractor, it was just him. Okay. Then he went to hire a driver, and then I started managing his drivers for him, Okay. basically. Got you. So you guys were actually like a bonded brokerage and all that. Mm-hmm. You, you had an official brokerage company. Correct. So what happened with that company? With that brokerage, it was just hard. I mean, it took me months to actually uh, broker a load. I did get back into brokering after I learned a little bit more about trucking, and that's why I tell people knowledge is power, but it's the applied knowledge. Mm. So I needed to learn more about trucking because I was kind of green to it you know my brother was just throwing everything putting everything on my lap and it was a lot for me to handle so once um you know his trucking company started and I started to dispatch the freight I saw the other end of it Uh, so from the broker's perspective now I have the trucking perspective and then I put those two together and then I started a freight brokerage and then from there I got more into teaching Mm. other people how to open up how to start a freight brokerage because when i got started it wasn't any information on youtube right so basically i just had this brother that had to teach me everything but i didn't really have resources to go to to get help or find out you know um what i could do if i had any answers or anything so that's when i started the youtube and our youtube kind of started more of the freight brokering for people that are looking to get into the industry and they didn't you know, have the resources basically. Okay. Okay. So you start the trucking company and you start Mm -hmm. helping them run that company after the brokerage, right? After the brokerage. That's correct. So what is that trucking? And what, what year are we in? Where are we at now? Uh, let's see. This was probably 2013, 2014. Okay. Somewhere around So about seven years ago. Yes. All right. What, what's, what's the company? What's your niche? What are you guys running? Um, he does dry van power only, um, and flatbeds. Okay. And that's more of his company. So Bumblebee is what I started doing on my own. It was an offshoot of basically that. Cause Correct. You, you were helping him with that company and you started Bumblebee. Yeah. And I started helping other guys with their companies okay. basically. Got you. Mm-hmm. And you started dispatching for other people. Correct. Correct? Okay. Mm-hmm. So what was like your niche with dispatching? Like what type of freight were you dispatching? Um, we pr- pretty much power only flatbeds, okay. stepdads, dry vans, reefers. Okay. That's kind of what I stay with with um i have dispatch hot shots um but i really like to do just the semi trucks dry vans reefers flatbed step decks and power only okay and then early you said in your first week you did your first month you did how much the first week first week yes um i think i only had like three or four carriers i don't really remember okay but i remember making two thousand that week okay and prior to trucking i used to work for clayton county police department Okay. What happened was my daughter's father was in the military and he passed away at 28. He had a mm. heart attack. Okay. So that prompted me. I used to work a lot, 12 hour shifts. And I'm like, God, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I stepped out on faith. So this was kind of in the time where my brother was coming home from prison. Right. And I just stepped out on faith. I quit my job. I really didn't know that, you know, I was going to go in the trucking field at that time. Right. Um, but I wanted to be there with my child. 
So that kind of prompted me to kind of push towards trucking because remember, at first when he kept telling me about trucking, I didn't want to do trucking. <laughs> right, I'm right. Like right. I don't want to do that. Right, right, right. <laughs> but it, but it made sense because you could yes. be home. It, it would fit your lifestyle or the Correct. lifestyle you were trying to to live. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how did you get your first carriers when you started your dispatch company? Craigslist. Okay. Yes. Tell um, me about that. Basically, I love Craigslist. Craigslist has made me a lot of money over the years. Okay. Um, but basically, I just ran an ad on Craigslist, and then I had carriers to start calling me. Okay. Um, from there, what that ad look like? Basically, owner operators with own authority, um, dispatch services. I think I was charging ten percent at the time. Okay. And probably my phone number, something like that, my website, and they would call. Okay. And the calls just started coming in. You got a large influx of calls or a couple calls? How'd that I got work? a lot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Maybe about 20 or 30 calls in the first few days. So, really? Yeah. Okay. But you didn't mm -hmm. end up actually closing all those carriers, mm -mm. right? No. So what happened with the, with the you could, just couldn't manage them all? What? Well, you know, some people will call you just like now. Just, just I get a call. lot of phone calls right. and they, they may say, I want to do this. I want to do that. And they may circle back around. They okay. don't really make that move. Um, so I would say out of the 20, maybe I started with four or five. Okay. And I just kept building from there. Got you. So this is interesting <laughs> because this is just, uh, people ask all the time. And this is one of the frequently asked questions. So what did you say to those carriers being kind of new, a new dispatcher, a new dispatch company? Mm -hmm. What was your pitch? We have a lot of freight. <laughs> when are you ready? <laughs> right. Was it the truth? Yeah, it was. It was the truth. Yeah, we have a lot of freight. Yeah. Okay. So where were you getting all the freight from? The low boards. Okay. Really, you okay. know, so your dad and then I built relationship with brokers as well um, throughout the years. So a lot of times I can call the brokers. We have that rapport. We have that relationship. They would just give me the fright. Mm. You know, if they know I can handle it. Um, they will give it to me. Got you. Got you. Okay. So mm -hmm. you start dispatch, you said for about four different carriers? Yeah, yeah roughly about four. About mm -hmm. four. And this is within the first couple months or so. Mm -hmm. And then how, how big do you grow that? Uh, really big. So from there, I started dispatching them. What happened is we started to get carriers that had power only, right? Mm -hmm. So with power only freight, um, let's just say we were looking at a low board here in Atlanta. If you have a dry van or you have a trailer, there may be over five to six, 600 loads available. If it's a power only, that's going to narrow down maybe to 30. OK, so you could get freight, but it's harder because now when you have this new carrier, you got to look at their authority. How long has your authority been active? If it's under 30 days or 90 days, now some of the brokers may not even utilize them. So what I basically did from there, I'm like, OK, if these carriers can't get trailers, I'm going to go out and get trailers and rent it to them. It's going to make my job easier. Mm. So what I did, I actually went to the bank, got a loan and said, my credit's good. Let's see what happens. And got a loan, got two trailers. At that time, I was doing about $600 a month per trailer, okay. which was $1,200. I started with two. My note to the bank was only $400. So I was making an $800 profit. And on top of that, I was dispatching them. Wow. So I kept redoing that same process again. Okay. Um, I was buying all of my trailers from Warner. Okay. And I just kept flipping it. Okay. How much did the trailers first, like initial trailers cost you? About 10000 per trailer. About 10000 Okay. So mm -hmm. you see this opportunity where there's all these power only trucks out there, opportunities. They have no trailers. So mm -hmm. you say, let me go buy some trailers. Correct. Aside from just the fact that the, you, you saw the need, like what made you confident to think that that would work? Faith. Mm. Again, the other side of fear is freedom, right? So in life, a lot of people, what stops them is fear. So remember when I talked about leaving my job from the police department, yep. not knowing what I was going to do. I had a child, a dependent that was dependent on me. It was faith. It was just, hey, I got to do this. So at the end of the day, um, I felt like I didn't know if it was going to work or not work, to be honest with you. But it worked. And I'm right. glad it did work. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but it was just faith. It was just stepping out on faith. Hey, let's try something new. And I will tell you, that actually changed my life. So trucking has allowed me to elevate in life. Um, I've made a lot of money in trucking. I've started other businesses because of trucking. So just that decision of starting with those two trailers, um, it started to create passive income. Whereas you have a lot of people that get into the real estate industry, right? And they want to, let's say, get houses and rent them out. 
So from my, um, I kind of basically did that with, with trucking and trailers, where I get a trailer for 10000 but I'm making 600 a month. Whereas if you get a house, let's say a $100,000 house, you may only make six or $700 a month on your rent, but you got to ha- still have that mortgage of that 100000 you got to pay back. Mm. So for me, it made more sense to just get the trailers, rent them out, and just keep repeating that process. Yeah, no, nah, I, I love that. And, and, and it obviously made you more marketable as well, right? Because you probably put this now in your marketing material like we also have trailers also. Correct. Right? So this was this grew your your, your dispatch capabilities as it well. It grew. Yeah. And, or anything else I did in the trucking. Because now, you know, as I added on the trailer rental, then I'm like, okay, what else can I do? Well, people pay for something they don't know or something they don't want to do. Mm. So now guys are coming to me. Can you set my authority up? Can you help me with this? I also do business consultations. Um, so it's just I just kept expanding basically. How large did you go the dispatch to? How how many carriers? Um, I want to say over two hundred. Over two hundred carriers. Mm-hmm. How were you managing all those carriers? Were you doing it by yourself or did you have a team? No, I can't do 200 okay, by myself. Okay, all right. I was about to say, cut, cut, cut the broadcast. Uh, I'm, I don't believe no, it. What's going no. on? So tell me about building a team. So, tell me about that. How, so that I started off with the freight dispatch training. Okay. So what I would do, because a lot of people would go take trainings for a lot of different companies and they sell them dreams. So I would take my students that actually do my training and I would use them as interns. And then as I get people that want to, you know, get dispatch services, here you go. Give them about two to three weeks maybe to dispatch them. Now I'm going to also pay them. Mm. So now instead of them doing dispatch and they got to go out here and try to find carriers, you don't need to find carriers. I got the carriers. Mm. Learn to dispatch. Now I'm going to also pay you. And so most of the um, dispatchers, they, they work from home. Yeah. You know, they live in other states. They work from home. Man, you smart, man. That's Thank that's, you. that's 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 some good stuff. Thank so you, you so you train people to dispatch, then you mm-hmm. employ them as your dispatchers, mm-hmm. and now they're taking care of these these this large carrier networks. Are you still dispatching two hundred trucks or Yeah, well I don't personally well, do the, it. The whole yes, yes. operation mm-hmm. is over two hundred trucks. What's the uh the, the, the mix in terms of like the type of trucks that you guys dispatch? You do everything or so, what do you specialize in? Again, the semis, so your power only, flatbeds, dry vans, reefers. Step desk. Every now and then, RGNs, that's going to be for, like, your oversized freight. Mm-hmm. Um, but mainly just your dry van, flatbed, you know. We don't do hot shots or uh, box trucks. Okay. Because I haven't figured out, really, with the box trucks, um, how to get that freight. A okay. lot of times, they need contracts. Um, Amazon is out there. They could sign up with Amazon, too. But we mainly stick with the semi-trucks. Okay. Got mm-hmm. you. All right. So, for someone who wants to get into dispatching, Right. Mm-hmm. What will be your advice to them? They're fresh. They're, they're coming into the business. What's the first steps they should take? Uh, gain knowledge. That's going to be the first thing with anything you want to do in life. Do your research, gain knowledge. And if they're looking at us as an option, they can go to our website. They can give us a call. They can um, bumblebeedispatch.com is the website. They can send us an email if they have any questions. Uh, we're on YouTube and we have a lot of helpful information at Bumblebee Dispatch. Mm -hmm. We talk about dispatch. We talk about brokering, trucking, pretty much anything in logistics. So a lot of times, any questions they have, if they go on there, it may answer their questions that they have as well. Got you. Where do you find most people stumble when they get into dispatching? Um, Most people stumble because they they don't know how to get carriers. You know, that's what anything. Everybody isn't good with sales, but any business you have, you have to get your clientele. Right. You see what I'm saying? And that's where the sales come in at. Got you. Got Mm -hmm. you. Okay. So now you build this trailer business on top of that. So you said you were renting the trailers for 600 a month? Back then. Back then. I was about to say. Back then. Okay. Yeah. So now it's, it's going up The price that went up because, you know, there's a trailer shortage there's, going on. There's a trailer shortage. The other day I had one trailer become available. I one. sent out a mass, because they keep them. They, yeah. Nobody turns my trailers back in. Right. I sent out a mass email. Do you know I got over 200 emails of people that wanted that trailer. I also partner with dealerships here in Atlanta. The sales reps are calling me. Courtney, I need that trailer. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's kind of like with the housing market. Everything is going up. Yeah. So in the trucking industry, trailers, tractors, 
Um, their overpriced is going up. It's a shortage. Yeah. You know, yeah. so which is good business for me. For sure. <laughs> Great so that was bad in. then. I don't want nobody to call me and yeah. say, you got trailers for $600 because yeah. that ain't, that's not true. So what would somebody be spending now around? You're the, looking around at the at least a thousand a month. Okay. And I mean, it depends because like I have flat beds that's going for like 350 a week. I mean, it just really depends on the trailer they're getting. Um, dry vans are going to be ch ch uh, cheaper. We only do dry vans and flat beds. Okay. And step beds. Okay. We don't do refrigerated trailers at all. Okay. They're just way more expensive to handle. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you store all these trailers? Where do you put them? Um, well, they're usually out. Well, but, they're, but when they're not. If out. they're not, I have uh, parking lots you can store and things. I don't own the parking lots, okay. but you know, they have parking lots where you can store it. Do but. you have like tracking devices on them? I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got mm -hmm. you. Okay. So when you're starting a trailer rental business, let's talk about that. What what provisions do you have to put into place in order to run that successfully? Um, well, we do lease agreements. So we do like a minimum six month. I would say make sure you have a lawyer on your team that can go over your agreements, make sure you're well protected. Um, and then we can do consultations on it as, as well, but it's really easy. Okay. Um, I mean, you go out and buy the trailer. If you can find the trailer, we do a deposit. We do minimum six months. We don't do credit checks. So a lot of people come to us because you have to realize someone get into the trucking industry, a lot of times they exhausted all of their funds. They've got their authority. They put 10000 down on a tractor. You know, just getting everything up and going. And insurance is very expensive. Yeah. Um, I've had a guy, too, out of Kentucky. We did his authority. He went to go get insurance, and it was $12,000 down payment for him to put on his insurance. Mm. Now, that could have had something to do with his NVR. I'm not sure. Right. Um, I had a guy out of Florida, about 7000 down. So a lot of times they exhaust their funds. Okay. And they can't go out and get a trailer. So we don't do credit check, um, and we kind of make it easy. We don't put you through all that red tape and things of that nature. Got you. And you said you get your trailers from Werner? I use I get them from wherever now. From wherever when now. I started out, it was one. Okay, so mm -hmm. how do you find trailers? Um, what, 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 what is what? the truck online? Google. Uh, <laughs> you just Google trailers, trailers for sale. Trailers for sale. Or okay, so okay, so next, how do you know what's a good trailer to buy? What do you, what do you what is what specs are you looking for to know that this is a trailer that I want to purchase that's worth you know? Okay. What, Go ahead. Go ahead. So it. most of the time, dry vans are standard. I need a 53 foot swing door. Um, some drivers like air Why swing instead of roll up because that's what the the brokers when they go and get loaded. When they go to the dock, they need the doors to be swing door because they have the uh, forklifts that drive in there. So with a roll up door, you're going to lose a few inches because it don't go all the way up. So a lot of times if you see like the U.S. mail. They have the roll-up doors. Mm -hmm. But with the swing door, is wider. So now you can get those pallets in there like they need. The forklifts are going in and out. So a lot of the shippers and brokers require that. Okay. Okay, so it's the most popular one. So you always get looking for a swing door. Correct. 53 foot? Yes. No 48s? 48s when it comes to flatbeds, but not when it comes to driving in because okay. you need to make sure it can fit whatever amount of pallets. So 53 foot swing doors for drive-ins. Um, Vented? Or no, I don't really do vented. Vented if you're doing like a lot of produce or things of that nature. I just do the standard drive in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. C continue. What else? Okay. What other specs are you looking um, for? Flatbeds, they're simple. You got a 48 foot or a 53 foot, basically. Some have the headboard on it, some don't. It's really just the carrier's preference. Um, but that's basically it. I don't do refrigerated because with the refrigerated reefers back then, um, a brand new refrigerated reefer was about 50000 A used was about twenty. I'm pretty sure those prices have went up. Mm. And then with the refrigerated reefers, you have hours. So you're running that motor, and a reefer has a motor on it. It's kind of like your car. You have to service your car motor. That's something else that has to be serviced. So as me, as far as renting that out, I don't want to do that if someone just tears up the trailer and then it's going to cost more repairs. Right. So I just stick with dry vans, flatbed, step debt. How do you maintain your trailers? Well, the carriers are responsible for maintenance. We don't charge a mileage. Um, but, however, when they bring it back in, we do take it to get a full DOT inspection um, before we rent it out to someone else. Got you. Have you ever had any horror stories with renting out trailers to people? Oh, several. Tell me about one. Yes. Um, so there was this one guy here in Atlanta, down okay. in Noonan. Okay. Um, now, I'm thinking he mainly had a trucking company, so he wasn't a driver. Okay. He actually rented three trailers from me. A um, few weeks went by, I didn't receive a payment, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. He returned two of my trailers, but the third one, he didn't. 
So at this time, I had to get a lawyer. I had to take him to court um, and actually take a warrant out for his arrest, to be mm. honest with you. Oh, wow. Um, and, and again, you know, any business, you learn from it. So you learn different things of um, with the lawyer. You know, at that time, I didn't have a lawyer on my team. Now I do. So it's just about growing. You know, you learn from mistakes. Um, but anyway, took a warrant out for his arrest. He didn't want to go to jail. And he had his lawyer contact me to kind of do a settlement, and he did pay me for the trailer. What it was, he had a driver. I don't know what happened between him and the driver, but the driver must have took off with his truck and trailer. And now if if anyone has a driver, they have to give us their driver information. Mm. You know, I need a photo ID copy of that driver to let the driver know, hey, Bumblebee owns this trailer, not the guy you're um, running for. Right. You know, basically. Right. Or we can get in contact with him. Right. You know, right. right. Mm -hmm. what, what business do you love more? The dispatch business or the uh, trailer rental? Well, the trailer rental, everything in trucking is under Bumblebee Dispatch. Mm -hmm. Um I love trucking. Mm -hmm. I mean, trucking is my heart because that's what, again, allowed me to elevate in life. Um, I do have multiple businesses that I own now, but trucking was that foundation of it. Right. You know? Right. So the trailer rental, of course, is easy. Yeah. You know, people just pay weekly. I don't really have to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just love trucking in general. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So... So aside from the trailer rental, you start you start adding these other businesses, other services to your business. Can you talk about those again? You said ELD, seen some other ones? Sure, sure. Um, electronic log device. Um, basically, back in the day, the truckers used to have to do the paper logs. Mm -hmm. Now they do the electronic logs. So we can get them set up with that. Um, factoring. You know, we partner with a large factoring company. If they need factoring, they would just go to our website, click on the factoring um button at the top and they can sign up for factoring services um, and fuel cards. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have to actually email them the fuel card application, but they could send us an email and we send it to them or they can contact us. It doesn't matter. Got you. All right. I mean, you, you make this whole process sound like it was so simple, <laughs> man. I'm just like, this is a lot that you have going on. So mm -hmm. tell me about some early struggles that you had in your business. I mean, getting started because people, people, People watch this show because they 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 they're struggling in some mm -hmm. areas, or mm -hmm. they want to be inspired and know that you know it's there's light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your early days getting started in dispatch. Just tell me, you know, what was going on and how did you kind of you, you know, persevere? So my main struggle was going to be the freight brokering. Okay. Actually, I love dispatch. <laughs> okay, okay. But um, freight brokering, because it wasn't easy. You know, right. it was hard going out to get customers, even though I was able to accomplish that. It's just that a lot of people get into the industry and they think that they're going to just start making money right away. Right. And that's not true. Again, like with the real estate, you have people that go to school to be an agent, and when they're done, they're thinking, I'm going to be a multimillionaire real estate agent. <laughs> right. But you, they are working a job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, that was going to be my early struggles. Now, as far as dispatch, when I first started to expand the dispatch business, um, hiring dispatchers. So at first, they didn't go through my training. You know, I, I needed to grow because I had all these carriers coming in. I needed more dispatchers. There was um, a situation where this one guy, I basically trained him, and he started stealing my customers. Mm. Um, so I didn't know about a non-compete. But then, I, again, I learned about that. I got my non-compete together. Right. Um, but he would basically go and poach my customers and offer them a lower dispatch fee. Mm. And start taking them from me. So that was a real struggle because now you're taking money out of my pocket. Right. You see what I'm saying? And right. it's someone that I kind of helped. I didn't know him. Um, he was someone that would call. He knew about Bumblebee. He would actually call me all the time. Can you teach me? I really want to get started. You know, he was very eager in the beginning. And then after he learned everything, he basically started taking my customers. Wow. So that was just, you know, a learning experience. Um, you know. What, what, what does training look like? Training, everything is digital. Okay. So everything is online. Okay. Um, and what the, type of topics? Let's, let, let's get into the different topics that you would cover in training when okay. you train the dispatcher. So as far as dispatch, we're going to go everything from beginning to end. We take you step by step, um, setting up your LLC, creating that EIN number, um, how to find your carriers to dispatch, how to use a load board, um, setting up your carrier packet. 
you know, when you get a new customer for dispatch, how you get paid. So we basically take you step by step from dispatching from beginning to end. Same thing with our freight broker training. Um, everything is step by step. Okay, mm -hmm. got you. So let, let's let's talk about some of that stuff. Let's 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 give a little bit of okay. some spoilers. Real okay, quick. okay. So so tell me, how do you find carriers? Now you you talked about finding uh, well carriers to mm -hmm. Craigslist. Okay, right. Tell well, that some, was on dispatch. That, yeah, that yeah. was dispatch. So 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 talk to me a little bit about that. Another um, resource is Facebook. Okay. So what I normally do is I join Facebook groups. And the power of networking is just amazing. Um, so I would say join Facebook groups and put yourself out there. You know, let people know, hey, I'm a dispatcher. And if you're a new dispatcher, you want your fees or rates to be low. You don't want to be too high. When I first got started in the game, um, I was at 10%. I do 5% now, 5 to 7. Okay. Okay, if they're power only, they're 7. If they're, they have a trailer, it's 5. Okay. Um, mainly because I want to be competitive, you know. There are dispatchers charging 10, 12, 14%, but in the beginning, you want to build up your clientele, you know. So I would say make sure you charge a lower rate and networking. So Facebook, Craigslist, anywhere you can post ads, you know, create an Instagram account, start with the hashtags, you know, just start building up that following. So people know that you are a dispatcher and you are available. Got you. What other ways do you stand out aside from competing in price? Um, I feel like my company stands out because we have so much to offer. So when I look at Bumblebee Dispatch, I see an Amazon or Walmart, but for the logistics industry, mm. where if I get a customer, I want to be able to service all of the, that customer needs where they don't have to go elsewhere. You see, we keep right. it in-house and it becomes a family where, okay, this customer needed their authority, but guess what? Now we have factoring. Do you need a trailer for rent? Do you need dispatch services? Where I can basically handle all of your needs. You don't have to go anywhere else. Got you. How do you mm -hmm. find shippers? Shippers, um, they're all around us. So the easiest way to find shippers is go home, open up your refrigerator, open up your pantry. <laughs> everything we utilize, what people don't realize, they kind of make it hard, but everything we utilize as consumers have to be transported via a truck. So when you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth, that Crest toothpaste, that's a shipper. When you get gas in your car, I mean, fuel is getting delivered. So just look in your house, start in your pantry, start in your bathroom, write the names down, go on the website, start uh, researching them and figure out how can I move this freight. Even if you're a new freight bro broker and some shippers may require, let's say, five years in business, um, they may have requirements that you don't have. At least you know this is what I need to get on with the shipper. And once I meet these qualifications, now I'm able to get with the shipper, even if it's Tyson. Mm. You see? Mm. So just start in your house. Air hair products, beauty products, everything we use, someone makes it, you know, and just start there. Makes a lot of sense. How, how do you price your lanes? Well, a lot of the shippers, um, some of the shippers in, in, that I've dealt with, they let us know what the freight is. Okay. So we basically just try to make a cut. So if I have a shipper and let's say they're paying $1,000 for a load, um, I may try to, you know, broker it for 800 Right. But it's a negotiation process. Right. Another thing is volume. So even if, let's say I make $50 off a load and I'm pushing 1,000 loads that day, it's the volume. Right. So I try not to be greedy. I try to make sure the carrier, you want to make sure you build that relationship with the carrier. And even if you go lower and you don't make a big of a cut, how much can you move? Got you. you so, see? so what about when you're like, if you're working off the load board and you could pretty much negotiate that rate, how do you like, you know, figure out what you want to pay? Like wh what's your, wh what do you think about like in terms of like hot markets and all that? Okay. Like, talk about that. That, okay. Uh, framework. So on the dispatch end, if you're working off a low board and you call a broker, mm -hmm. I always teach my dispatchers ask for more money. <laughs> okay. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm working for two different ends here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reason why I've gotten four to five hundred dollars extra on a low just by asking. Mm. So on the dispatch end, if I'm a dispatcher and a broker tells me, oh, I'm paying $1,000. Can you do 1500 <laughs> It sounds like a lot, but if I ask for 12, let's say I ask for 12 and you want to give me 10, 50 or 11, but I ask for 15 and you give me 13. Right. You see? Right. So I always tell them to ask for more money and you never know what you can get. Mm -hmm. um, most carriers at least want $2 a mile, mm -hmm. depending on the trailer. So you try to at least meet their minimum. When they come over for dispatch, they're going to let you know. Well, my minimum is 
a dollar ninety five, two dollars, you right. know, two fifteen. And so you try to meet that goal, but I always ask for more money. Are there any telltale signs that you look for when you're working off the load board that would make you say, All right, if you see this this, you know you can go on for the kill. Um, okay, <laughs> listen, just last week we had a load that yeah. was just the price was uh, just crazy, and I'm going to tell you. So it was 53 miles, and it paid $1,000 for wow. a drive-in. Okay. So that broker actually had two of those loads. We had a carrier that was supposed to pick it up. He would have did two loads at 53 miles each for $2,000, where if he would have delivered both of them, we could have got him a third load mm. for that day. So now we're adding more revenue onto his truck, and he's a power only. However, the load did get canceled. <laughs> so they said it wasn't ready, right. but that was a really good load. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. jump on it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but you'll kind of figure out, like, when you're on the load board and you see loads, I mean, you see something $5 a mile, that's a good rate. Right. But still call that broker because is there any is there multiple drops? Like, why is this load paying $5 a mile? That's not normal. Right. So is it a hot load where they just needed to get there fast? Or what else is going on with this load? Right, right. Are there mm -hmm. any markets that you try to stay out of? Areas you try to stay away from? Um, We mainly run the southeast regions. With our carriers that come on, They we allow them to tell us where they want to go and don't want to go. Mm. Some carriers may not want to do the mountains because with the weight and going up the mountains, it may burn more fuel, put more on their transmission. 80% um, of our carriers is the southeast region. Okay, mm -hmm. got you. And so so basically, um, that that's like also the hot markets too. The, Correct. The south, they run the southeast. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, got you. Now that's that that that's interesting. You have a, a tight operation. So how, how do you manage all of your dispatchers? Like you you work with a bunch of how many dispatchers are you working with now? I don't even remember the number to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, it's probably tw right at thirty, probably around thirty. Yeah. I think. So how how do you guys like? Like, uh, how do you communicate on a regular basis? So I don't necessarily, I have someone that's kind of in charge of the okay. dispatcher, so I don't really have to, you know, talk so when to you, them. So let's say when you started, when you were building it. Okay. Like, how, how are you building it out to where everybody could be kind of in sync? So basically what I did in the beginning is if I have a dispatcher, I would give them a carrier. I'll let them call the carrier, introduce, introduce their self. Um, and then from there, that's their baby. They have to manage this carrier. These are the carrier expectations. Um, as they book the freight or the loads for the carriers, they would send us the copy of that rate confirmation to mm -hmm. a specific email. Okay. So that way we can keep up with the loads that that particular dispatcher booked for that week. Okay. 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 Um, and they still do that to this day. So they, any rate confirmations, they email us. They also email the carriers and they dispatch the drivers. Um, so it's kind of like a system in place and then we pay weekly. So every week direct deposit. Okay. So mm -hmm. now with, with the freight brokering, so you, you never got back into freight brokerage, right? I so did. I started, um, the, the freight brokerage again. Okay. You did start it again. Yes. Okay. And I was doing very well with it, but I, it's like my heart was to dispatch. Okay. So I didn't want to have so much because with the brokering, you got your shippers calling, you have people on the load board calling. So what I did is I focused more on training people. And even with the brokerage, I would take in the students and allow them to work under my brokerage. Okay. But I still had the dispatch going on as well. So I had the freight brokerage and the dispatch. My heart was more towards dispatch. Okay. The money was faster. It was easier to get carriers. With the brokering, you had more overhead. Dispatch is no overhead. Right. Because guess what? Everybody has internet. You have a laptop. You have a phone. With brokering, you have to have an authority just like a trucking company. Right. You have to have a surety bond. So it makes money. But for me, my money was coming faster with dispatch. So I just said, let me focus on this. But I'll still train people how to become freight brokers. Because, again, when I got started, it was no information out there. Right. So I still have the freight brokerage training, but I'm more towards the dispatch. So does this, is the freight brokerage still active or did you no, dissolve it? I dissolved that. Okay, so you dissolved yeah. that and you just and Focus, focus more on dispatch. Okay. And okay. training. Okay, and yes. training. <laughs> Got you. So you, you said that uh, trucking and has allowed you to open up, like, create more opportunities for you. Tell me about some other businesses that oh, you're involved in. Sure, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically, I got a vending company. Okay. And how I got started in vending, I was at Sam's one day, and I saw these two guys. They had a straight truck. I'm looking at the straight truck because I'm in the trucking industry. Right. But I'm curious. 
You know, and I'm like, why are they putting all these honey buns and tater chips in this straight <laughs> truck? What is going on? Right. So I go and approach them and I'm like, hey, do you guys have a convenience store? And he said, no, we have vending machines. And I'm like, oh, I never thought about vending machines. Mm -hmm. So from that point, um, I basically started doing research on vending and vending machines. And um, since I was already making passive income with the trailers, I'm like, okay, I can start this business for my kids. Right. And show them how to create passive income. So we started with the bubblegum machines. You know, the little 25 cent, the quarter you put yeah, in the yeah, machine yeah, and yeah, turn yeah, it. Turn, okay. We started there. We start. I had a um, locator. He would place them for me. Okay. But they didn't really make a lot of money. Right. I mean, I'm like, you have to have a lot of these things. <laughs> right. So from there, I wanted to do full on vending. I wanted the snap machines. I wanted the drink machines. And I just kept every day I was on YouTube. It was a few people on YouTube I follow and I would watch their collections. Okay. They would do vending collections. And I'm like, I want me some vending machines. Right. Um, I ran across this company in Florida. They had a sales rep here in Georgia. And basically that's how I kind of got started into it. Um, my first location was a warehouse here in McDonough, Georgia. And when I got that first location, again, go back to faith and fear. Mm -hmm. um, they found me a location. They said, Courtney, this location needs six machines, and it's going to be $40,000. I said, I'm not paying $40,000 for no vending machines. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but, again, you know, from leaving the police department, from getting trailers, it's always been faith. And that's always elevated me. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. Mm. Um, I did do my research. I found this other guy. I want to say he was in Maryland. He said, Courtney, if they got you, and he wasn't even with their company. He was with a totally different company. Okay. He was like, if they found you a location with 200 employees and with the 40000 I didn't have to pay that up front. They do financing. Right. So the power of credit, everything in this world is financeable. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I only had to put 10% down, which is like $4,000, but I had a monthly payment of like 800 a month. He said, Courtney, you're going to make your money. He said, can you keep up? Basically, you're <laughs> right. going to be there every day. Can you keep up? Right, right, right. So I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I signed the paperwork. That facility started making me 250 a day. In one a day, day? In one day. That's great. Okay? So I kept going from there. I started yeah. getting more locations. Then to cut down on some of the price, I started getting my own locations. Okay. Because the sales rep, they were putting they, their fees in and things of that nature. So I just started doing more marketing and advertising. Now I have companies to call me. We also have coffee service now. Um, right now I have about 30 vending machines. Mm. So And it's growing. So Wow. Yeah. So how much on average does a vending machine bring in like weekly or monthly? Um, right now I'm doing about, probably about 15,000 a month 15, in the vending. With, with all of them, with all the vending. Yeah, with all, with all my machines. That's dope, yeah. man. Now that's gross. Yeah, that's So my gross. net will be half of that. Because okay. usually, let's say you get a honey bun for 50 cent, you're going to sell it for a dollar. Yeah. Some things I'm able to triple, but usually if I'm, if I'm grossing uh, 15 on vending, I always say my net is half. Got you. And do mm -hmm. you have to you have to stack uh, supply the vending machines yourself, or yes. do you have somebody doing that for you? I do have help, but me and my daughter actually go out and do it sometimes. Okay. Because I don't really do anything, so I, sometimes I want to be a little active and just right. I don't want to just sit, you know. <laughs> right, right, uh, right. And amongst that, I, my son is seven. Okay. So I just started him an ice cream truck business. Okay. That is doing really well. An ice cream truck business. He has an ice cream truck. It's named after him. Okay. And um I mean it's doing really well. So you purchased an ice cream truck. I purchased a sprinter van. Okay. And I customized it. And you it. customized it and made it a truck. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the company? It's Tazzy Poo Ice Cream. Okay. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. That's yeah, dope. Yeah. So, how, like, how does that work? How do you, like, find your routes? Where do you go? Just We don't anywhere? drive around. Okay. We mainly do events. Um, okay. Daycare centers. Um, we did one for the, um, not the mayor. Uh, anyway, he's, like, the mayor in South Fulton. Okay. We did an, he had a community event. We do those. Um, but people just really book us, you know, okay. for events. And then a lot of times if you're doing an event, you meet people in the community. We do churches. But it has really taken off. How much did it cost you to customize the, the Sprinter? 27000 Okay. But you have to realize I had to buy another van because that original Sprinter van was for my vending business. Okay. And then I had to go out and purchase another van for vending. That was about 27000 Okay. All in to get started with the ice cream truck, I'm at 60000 But it's not like your old school ice cream truck. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. how much does that business make? 
right now it's doing two to three thousand a week. Dope, dope. Mm-hmm. So how are you? Let, let's talk about just being an entrepreneur because. How are you managing all of these different businesses? I, mean, I am busy. <laughs> you, 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 I mean, because you make it sound like it's easy, but you it have a lot, a lot going on. Yeah, I mean, I kind of try to manage my time, um, but a lot like trucking is just the systems are set in place. So okay. I don't really have to do much with that. Um, every now and then I have consultations. People will book me for consultations. Um and then even with vending, everything is on your computer. So you're able to see what sales you have daily, hourly, um, when something needs to be restocked and things of that nature. Mm. You know, so you kind of know in advance, you know? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. what your schedule is going to be looking like. Correct. Man, that's that's crazy, man. I, mm-hmm. it's, it's just so much you have going on. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm baffled. I'm like, man, every every time I ask, you're like another business. Yeah. Is there anything else that you that that, that you got going on that you didn't tell not us really, about yet? Not really. Not yet. So you, so you got the the vending machines. You have um, the 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 ice cream truck, and you got the dispatch, the trailer mm-hmm. rental, and everything else, right? Mm-hmm. Wow, dope, man, dope. And it all came from trucking. And it all came from trucking. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you, what's next? What, what, what else are you looking into? I have a lot of things, Ness. <laughs> but I don't really like to speak on things okay. until I manifest it. Okay. So I just circle back around with me soon, and okay. you'll see. Okay. Yeah. You can't give us a little glimpse into what that might be? Maybe some warehousing? Maybe some... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say it's food-related. Food-related. Okay. okay. Re- okay. Well, matter of fact, I'll speak it. And so it's, it's a restaurant. It's a restaurant. I'm working on a restaurant. What type of restaurant do you want to It's going to be a coffee and dessert bar. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, dope. I love so. it. I love it. All right, Courtney. Well, listen, man, you've uh, you dropped a lot of bombs today, man. I Thank appreciate you. it so much. Um, we always like to close out with a final thought. Mm-hmm. So we have to, you know, let the audience know, you know, just whether it's spiritual, entrepreneurial, mm-hmm. just give people some motivation and then let everybody know where they can connect with you and, and, and learn more about yourself and then mm-hmm. Bumblebee Dispatch. OK, so the biggest thing I want to leave or the biggest message is sometimes in life we have to step outside of our comfort zone. Being in your comfort zone will will hinder you from progressing in life. So I always tell people, again, the other side of fear is freedom. Um, That is how I was able to elevate in life, just stepping outside of that comfort zone and doing things that um, I didn't think I would do or doing things that I was even afraid of doing. Um, And trucking is not always easy, but a lot of times it's the persistent. You know, if you get started in freight brokering, don't give up because you haven't found a shipper in a month. Just be more creative. Figure out what you need to do. What are you doing wrong? And figure out what is it that I can do to get the shipper. You know, if you're doing dispatching and you haven't found a carrier, maybe you should um, just be more creative. Start networking with people because they're out there. You know, even if you have to physically go to the truck stop, pass out cards, and just market yourself. Um, You can find me on social media www.bumblebeedispatch.com, um, Instagram at Bumblebee Dispatch, Facebook Bumblebee Dispatch, and my Instagram at Miss Petty85. There we go. All right, Hustle Fam. Man, this was a, a jewel pack show. We appreciate it, Courtney. Listen, you know how we do at the end of the show. If you smell something burning, it's only a desire. And Courtney and I, we are out. Mm-hmm. Nice. doing your thing man well, thank keep, you keep, keep pushing, keep thank growing, you man. That's i appreciate it That's and dope. another thing too i just take like whatever money i make in the business i reinvest it into another business yeah so with trucking i invested it into vending vending i took that and invested it into the ice cream truck so i just keep flipping, just keep flipping. because i believe in having multiple sources of income a lot of people it's just like if you work a job yeah. right And I probably should have said this. I'm sorry. That's cool. Keep going. I'll keep going. Okay. So it's just like if you work a job, right? And that job say, I'm sorry, we're going to fire you. We don't need you anymore. Right? Your paycheck stops. But what happens is your bills don't stop. They're going to keep coming every month. And again, people get complacent. They're just getting up every day, going to their job. They're miserable. And they're not trying to find a way out of this rat race. Right? So the same thing with owning a business. Just because you own a business... It doesn't mean that it isn't difficult. It doesn't mean you're going to make a lot of money because owning a business, you have a lot of expenses. So as you do make money, reinvest that money into something else. You know, now if one of your business fails, you got money coming in elsewhere. You still can pay your bills. But if you just depend on and have all your ads in one basket, that business don't work and it fails. What are you going to do? Yeah. 
You know, yeah. you still may have money saved up, but now you got to figure it out. Right. But while you're making money, figure it out. Go ahead, invest that into something else. Have multiple streams of income. So you're going to always be, that's how you be wealthy, actually. No doubt. You know, no so doubt. that's I'm, it. I'm inspired, man. I'm inspired. Keep doing your thing. I'm not going to talk you to death nah, now. Nah, nah, nah. You was going in. That, that, I love it. I love it. <laughs> That, that was fear. We okay. Even if we put it in just that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, yeah, just yeah. hold up. We got to drop this nugget real quick. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was dope. If you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb. This is the place to come. Truck and hustle. Let's go.